Good morning. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. Many of you will know this, but these days from yesterday, Easter Sunday, until next Sunday uh, are called the octave of Easter. Octave just meaning eight, eight days. And um, in these days of the octave, uh, be on the lookout for a couple of things in the readings. First of all, in the Gospels, we will hear about the post-resurrection appearances uh, of Jesus to his disciples. And so uh, uh, today, uh, Monday, uh, we have Matthew's Gospel. Kind of picks up, overlaps a little from yesterday. And then we'll have um, two days of John's Gospel. Um, or uh, No, wait a minute. We have John's gospel, and then we have Luke's, etc. Anyway, uh, be on the lookout for that. A part of that is just to fill out the story. You know, we finished the gospels. Um, Matthew, Luke, and John. Mark doesn't have much there. Uh, so that's part of it, just to fill out the rest of the gospel and hear the rest of the Easter um, story, uh, so to speak, until the ascension. Uh, but part of that also, pay attention to some of the details of this. We've heard these stories many times, but imagine, if you will, as you hear these stories, the emotion of Mary Magdalene and the disciples, the apostles, seeing Jesus again, you know, seeing him risen for the, for the first time. Um, um, imagine that joy, you know. I have a feeling, although we can't feel that joy, you know, we didn't see our best friend, our our Lord, our teacher murdered, and then suddenly see him living again. Um, that that emotion is going to be beyond us. But I do have a sense that we're going to feel that joy in heaven when I finally see Jesus for the first time. Um, once I get over, however that's going to happen, hopefully that'll happen in purgatory or here if I get to heaven. Um, once I get over the shame of my sin and the guilt and all that, um, once I'm cleansed of all that and can see Jesus, I have a feeling that my joy and, and your joy uh, is going to be something like their joy, their post-resurrection joy, although uh, infinite. You know, uh, but you might, that's one area you might be thinking about this week. You, know. um, you might also notice this. This is a little harder to pick up and I'm, maybe I'm imagining some of this. So you, you can take this for what it's worth. I do get the feeling that Jesus also feel some human joy. Um, and I wonder about this. It's harder for me to believe this about me than it is about you. But I think Jesus will be, um, will have a certain joy on seeing us enter heaven as well. You know, And um, that's another thing you might think of. The other thing I want to uh, point out to you is in the first readings, we start to see certain things. For instance, today, um, the, the, the disciples, the apostles were all Jews, right? The early disciples. They knew these psalms. They, <clears throat> they prayed these psalms all the time in worship. You know, or in their own, um, well, they wouldn't have read scripture like we do. They didn't have, everybody didn't have, walk around with books, you know. But they would have known these scriptures. And you can almost, if you stop to think about it, see, we take all this for granted that this psalm applies to Jesus. But that was a new thought for the disciples. So you can imagine Peter in the time, in the 40 days or 50 days between Jesus' resurrection and Pentecost, 
you can imagine that Peter and the other apostles were starting to say, oh, that's what that psalm was really referring to. Or um, that kind of, I don't mean it, maybe not exactly that way. Um, but because all the prophecies, all the psalms had their own application at the time. But you can almost feel them starting to say, ah, this is the fulfillment of this. This applies to Jesus. This is what this means. You will not suffer your Holy One to undergo corruption. And they started reinterpreting the Psalms and the scriptures in light of Jesus. And that's why we don't throw away the Old Testament. You know, that was a heresy in the first century or, well, second century, I guess, really. Marcion saying, um, we don't need the Old Testament anymore. We have Jesus. No, no, no. The Old Testament enlightens us about Jesus. Jesus makes sense, complete sense now of the Old Testament. So the old and new come together, you know. The um, uh, New Testament is hidden in the old, so to speak, is one of the sayings. And the Old Testament is revealed in the new or something. So um, take your time with these readings this week, you know, and think about them. Um, tomorrow will be a little something different in the first reading. I'll talk about that. But start thinking about, okay, we take it for granted that these psalms apply to Jesus or these prophecies, but they didn't take it for granted. This was new stuff for them, right? And they had to be steeped in the Old Testament, which they were much more than we. And then in light of Jesus' resurrection, they started uh, re-understanding the scriptures. It's a beautiful week to read the scriptures at Mass, and um, we'll talk about them as we go through the week. Um, but that's enough for now. Um, thank you so much, all of you, for your kind uh, notes and emails, um, texts about Mass yesterday. Um, I was happy to say Mass for you, and I can't wait for the day we can be together again. God bless you.